Photographers took us to a village core. They made us do one short exercise. Look at balconies. This helped us look at a detail which maybe if we took photos at random would have missed. This led us to another experience. Taking photos of houses, not houses as buildings, but as places people live in. This went on to, the, to St. John's, a building where people pray. Hajar Ain, different buildings that elicit different kinds of experiences. A different experience of the same space. In your opinion, what changes um, a picture of a building from showing the building as a box then showing uh, the building uh, as a photo, uh, then bringing uh, out the photogenic uh, part of a building. Uh, mainly two things. Again, viewpoint, getting the right viewpoint for, for, for the subject. I mean, going low, shifting your angle, including a balcony or not including it, including the part of the balcony, including a part of the window. Uh, then, as, as in any architecture, photography is the type of lighting. If you don't shoot a building in the right type of lighting, I mean, it can look very dull. And it can, as much as it can look good, in the right type of lighting. In fact, when we, uh, when we were discussing at what time of day we would uh, visit the CG with the uh -huh. village core, um, you had suggested midday. Yes, uh, that, that's, why was that? Uh, in fact, it's the, the contrary way. I would suggest when, when you're using people, when you're shooting people. Midday, because I knew that the CG with streets are narrow. So, if uh, midday at least, you have a lot, the sun naturally is overhead. So, you've got a lot of light filtering through the streets. You don't have, uh, and you've got contrast. You don't have uh, too many shadows, because buildings need light to come out in a nice way. Uh, when they're all in the shade, uh, the stone loses its color, the texture is gone. So that's why I chose, I, I suggested that time.
buildings need not look like boxes. <laughs> now we went to the village core of Sijiri, um, and we chose certain aspects of buildings that show uh, a length of time, <laughs> that show, uh, that, uh, I mean, uh, you, had, you did not have fortifications in Sijiri, you had different abodes. You live in one, uh, one of these villages as well. What uh, do you find? Uh, do you f uh, f let's do you find the uh, the village core as something that elicits an experience, or would you say you look more towards the uh, the uh, balconies, the features, the uh, the different colors? Yes, and I think there are differences as well between one village and another. Um, uh, for example, in certain villages um, where the tradition, uh, the traditional um, uh, job or means of uh, like Ormi sustaining. and the bakeries, Ormi and the bakeries, um, Sijiwi and the farmers, uh, Zuri and the fishermen. Most of the people from Zuri are fishermen. Most of the people from Sijiwi are farmers. Most of the people from Ormi are bakers. At least from the village <coughs> core. From the village core. Um, that's their traditional um, uh, job, so to say. Um, uh, so that is, that's already one thing which um, uh, identifies, identifies the village. And uh, which, even when going to that village and you, you're taking photos, that is one of the things which one should bear in mind, even when taking photos yeah. of people in the village. Mentioning people. <coughs> Uh, we were speaking with Kevin about this experience in the village core and one trick of the trade, uh, so to speak, he says he tries to speak to the uh, people he meets on the street because they point out to you certain artifacts in the, in the street mm -hmm. that are linked to specific anecdotes uh, in history or to specific professions that make the experience all the more different. In one particular case here, um, in this house, for example, the neighbors pointed out at a door, right, it's, uh, it's outside this photo, uh, which had a, a hole from where the, uh, the miller could look out and see the time on the steeple of the, uh, of the church from there, which, which adds that, that bit of color. Exactly. Which you can't <coughs> really show in photos. Um, but mentioning this, that is why it is important. I mean, okay, you can have snapshots and they're brilliant photos. But planning a photo, you have much, much more chance of getting a good, brilliant photo when you're planning it, when you're studying what you're taking, and then going there, having planned it, and taking not just one. You try it out once, Five Especially times, with digital ten cameras. times, just going there again and yeah. again, over and over again. And because if you don't talk, the, the one you mentioned about the, this the person minute, yes. telling you about this feature, if you hadn't spoken to that person, you wouldn't have known about it. No, for us it would have been <coughs> just another door and a balcony at the top with a hole in it. Exactly. I think one of the real charms in local village life is to literally just park a car and start walking around, uh, where you can often walk through many little alleyways and small streets, and you'll find an abundance of uh, beautiful balconies dated from all different periods, uh, collections of you know, doorknobs and things like that. Uh, so the best aspect is really literally just get yourself lost, just get on foot and walk around.
one thing that I learned from this experience is uh, that, for example, when you're walking around the village core and you would like to take some photos of the village, rather than going around with a camera and capturing whatever falls in your eyesight, mm -hmm. within your field of view, is that we, uh, we picked up an item, we picked up balconies and doorways. And we looked around for attractive or photogenic or interesting, uh, historically or, uh, or visually, balconies and doorways. And this has helped me uh, maybe focus uh, and find and look out for that specific detail. Mm -hmm. um, what can you tell us about that? Um, well, firstly, about the village core, you know? Village cores in Malta are, you know, are amazing places, you know, because you really can, I mean, I think a comment I made at the time was getting, getting yourself lost in a village. And I think that's really what you need to do. I don't think you can become a, uh, you can't get involved in something unless you participate in it. And, and just standing back from the outset and just taking an overall view of something doesn't involve you enough. So I think walking around and seeing all the different, you know, doorknobs, balconies, etc., really starts to make you involved in what you're photographing. Mm. We were saying before that you, you, you'd have some criticism about this picture. Right. Uh, this is your shot, I think. Yes. Good. All right. So I can. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> For example, I'm, I'm, in fact, I, I shot. Uh, this is Saint Nicholas, uh, the, the, yes. the patron saint of Sijui, and this, the Sijui church in the background, actually. Um, I've shot the pictures of this. The lighting was super, but what's the main problem with this with this thing? Because you didn't shift your or whoever shot it anyway. Yeah. I'm blaming you. <laughs> you you didn't shift the viewpoint enough to. Uh, separate the statue from the church. So you've got a confusion in the middle with, with St. Nicholas hiding the, the church. So if we shifted ourselves... Just shift a bit so that you separate a bit the two, the two elements, focus on him and put the background a little out of focus so that he's still this, the, the main subject. You get such a much better picture. Sometimes um, one thing one thing we said uh, while we were walking around the uh, the village core mm -hmm. was that, for example, instead of going around the village and creating just snapping a, around, snapping mm -hmm. around like we did here, mm -hmm. um, it's better to focus on one uh, feature, especially when you're a layman. You feature on detail so that you can you look out for the right kind of shots. Uh, right. I mean, um, then you get the lucky breaks also which should be taken. Yeah. I mean, say, uh, we, we met that guy with, with, with the dogs on, yeah, on, yeah. on his car. That's, that's a picture in, in, in fact. Um, that, that's a lucky break because it's not wasn't staged. But I, I mean, he was a nice man. He started talking to us. And while he was talking to somebody else, somebody took this snap, which is really good. I mean, if, if you crop closer and try and remove a bit of these bars, I mean, it's a really nice picture because he's taken unawares. The dog is looking in the, also in the right direction. Yeah. I mean, you have to catch these moments also. Uh, then, as I said, again, a bit of planning. Go at the right time. Be always steady. I mean, be, be always uh, with your camera ready, because you, you might catch something which, although you weren't looking for it, it appears just there, and it's an instant which you have to catch. Uh, another detail, for example, uh, this is quite well seen. I mean, uh, th those colors, again, uh, details like those give the actual uh, feeling of the village. Uh, well, actually, uh, we, uh, we are grateful for the tip to look at, at something particular. At look small, for doorways small and items and, and doorways, and exactly. Because that helped us focus, that is another Exactly, good that's, uh, that's another good shot, in fact. Uh, you know, imagine that without the, the, the woman passing by. And what makes also the picture was the... Um, the yeah, the, 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 the walk, everything fitted in, yeah, although it's a candid, it's really good. Yeah, well, that is a crowd taken unawares. Exactly. So if you are sharp enough, if you are ready to create enough, if you are ready to dedicate time, 
go at the right moment, you will be rewarded with pictures like those. When we were on, uh, going around the harbour, while we were looking at a scenery of, uh, that had a clutter of different features, you, you identified one feature, the balcony, which actually Valletta specifically from the Mar Samchetto side, I mean, you have a whole showcase of different Special, balconies. Yeah. Uh, when uh, you look at, uh, when you mention balconies, you were noticing one specific thing. Do you see a social element in balconies, or is it just an object that... No, there is a strong social element. I mean, this, this, this is the people's uh, uh, window to the outside world, you know, and... Uh, is it a window in, in words? Could it be a, a sh or a showcase of what? I don't think so. I mean, the way the Maltese balcony, balcony is, is, is made, you know, it's uh, with the little um, shutter. shutter which opens partially and, you know, I mean, the old lady sitting behind the panes. For example, um, these are decorated balconies. These are smaller and, yes, and yes. plainer. Yeah, there's a hole. These are uh, this less a, well maintained. This is a very most candy. recent one, for example. I mean, I'm sure that's not the original there, but... For I'm example, to be uh, if, you, if you look at them, can you, can you actually use balconies in this photo to, uh, to identify a building? For example, this looks like an office. It's well maintained. Yeah, there's an air conditioner. Air conditioning unit. Yeah, exactly. Um, and the balconies are... Yeah, you know. pe people use the balconies for all sorts of things. I mean, a reading room, you know, as you can see, some people even hang their clothes from... Yeah, from washing. You know, it's, it's, a whole, it's a whole culture on its own. Uh, the use of balconies, you can say, even the way they paint them and, you know... Uh. Knowing more about the place, knowing more about the building, we're talking of buildings here, um, uh, it will help you more take certain photos and it will help you more um, uh, identify certain details in that building. For example, <coughs> what's interesting about this, uh, these two photos is that you, when you went to Hajar Im, you did not take photos inside Hajar Im only, but you went ahead and took photos of Filtla, which is the view from Hajar Im. Mm -hmm. How do you integrate, for example, Filtla with Hajar Im? Is it an environment issue? Is it proximity? It's both. It's environment and proximity. I think Filfla and Hajar Im uh, and the Naidra go, go together. Go, they go hand in hand. They are a package. It's, 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 it's a package. That was taken off a wall, on a wall in Sijiri. Okay. Uh, would you consider that abstract art or detail? Uh, depends how you define art. Okay. Or, yeah, Photography. I mean, would you yeah. consider that as an abstract photo? Basically, it's uh, it's it's what interested me. I was you know basically I was interested in texture, uh, so I've actually got a whole collection of of. You know, I, I see a lot of these old villages as being old, and so I'm looking for old things with them. And if I can see, basically, texture and things like that, then I, then then I find it a lot more more interesting. Uh, same with that, I'm seeing texture. I'm seeing uh, isolation. Isolation. That, that is one of the words that you like to yeah. use when describing isolation. photography. Isolation. What can you tell us about that photo? Basically, colours, colours, you know, we've got a nice blue, we've got a bit of yellow happening there, and we've got a bit of green happening there, and once again it's isolated, it's just simple, nothing in the way, uncluttered.
Uh, when photographing uh, historical sites or military sites like we have here, uh, I think it's very important first to get a good grounding on what you are shooting. I mean, what are the main points that one has to depict to show uh, the installation, uh, the historical parts of, of, all, of all the place. It's not just coming here and shooting what you see. If you have a good background of what you're shooting, you can uh, turn out definitely much better pictures. Some buildings were built for a very specific function, uh, like Fort Trinella. Right. Um, now, it's, for me, it's very difficult to get the photogenic out of a fortress, especially out of a small mm. gun installation. Uh, what, how, the, how, did you, how would you describe your experience taking photos of a small fort? Uh, it depends. I mean, not, not all of them are the same. For example, the British period forts, I mean, were more streamlined, less, less romantic uh, than, for example, the, the forts of the Knights. I mean, St. Angelo is, is uh, another thing, for example. It's, it's very photogenic. Rinella wasn't all that uh, exciting as a building because it's quite uh, plainish, moats, you know, uh, big walls, etc. But um, I quite find, found the interiors fascinating. And especially if you can... Uh, use the, the lighting, fil the light filtering through windows and doors, etc. That was quite nice. And then also, I mean, these places are enhanced 100% with the reenactments, with, with, the, with the people, you know, uh, reenacting the, the, the period costumes, the, the, uh, the procedure of running the fort, etc., which makes it so much more interesting and also uh, gives you much more photo opportunities that way. Uh, the main attraction uh, definitely of the Rinella site is its unique gun, which is uh, uh, the biggest in the world. Uh, in fact, there were only two, uh, two guns uh, like it. One is in Gibraltar and one is in Malta. Uh, this one is in fact in much better shape than, than the other one. Uh, definitely, uh, pictures of the fort are going to focus a lot on the, on the gun. Um, the lighting is critical when, when one is shooting uh, things like, like we have here. Uh, you know, if you have, don't have the right lighting, again, uh, the, the subject is not going to look so attractive. So it's better when you, if you come uh, when the light is, is, uh, is in the right position. Uh, another thing which, which helps uh, a shoot over here in Rinella is the fact that uh, uh, they have also uh, reenactors in, in, in the actual costumes of the period. So the, you, one can use uh, those persons or in uniform to also enhance the final shot. <laughs> 